Hey y'all, I wanted to talk to you today about a career hack that I kind of fell upon by accident on one of my software projects. And I think if you understand this, this will actually help you when you join a new software team, or let's say you got a job at a new company that builds software to get along with people quicker and to actually just get more work done by getting out of your own way. So my company asked me to help finish a software project that my firm had built for a utility company here in Austin. So this company was in the energy space. You know, you think of your oil and gas and electricity and water and all that, you know. So they were a company, a government agency that had a lot of technology in them. So one of the big things this company did was they would do all kinds of energy projects all over town here in Austin. And they had a hard time keeping track of them. And so my agency had helped them pick a off the shelf project management tool. Now you can think about on software projects, we do project management here, right? Where we have, you know, user stories and Kanban tasks and all the different artifacts that we create on software projects. But this company needed project management for utility projects, basically. But they also needed to extend that off-the-shelf system and basically do some custom programming to get it to do some stuff it didn't originally do. And this is what they had hired my firm to do, was to come out and do this custom work for them. So when I was asked to go out and help this client, I didn't know at the time, but I figured out very quickly that we had originally sent another consultant in to help them implement this solution. And unfortunately, things didn't go well and this consultant was let go because they just apparently weren't doing the job very well. So when I was dropped in to help this client, the relationship was pretty bad. But I showed up and I met this woman who was running the project from the client's side and she was actually really cool and, and you know, you never know what to expect, right, when you start a new project, especially if there's problems. Are people going to be angry? Are they going to be in an okay mood? How are they going to treat you? And there was another gentleman who was sort of the technical lead from the client's side on what the project was supposed to do. And he was actually pretty cool, but he was somewhat skeptical of me as anybody would be. And so when I got in there, I started to realize a couple things. One is I realized that this project management system that we had built for the client was very extensive. There was a ton of stuff in it that there was just like a lot of learning I was going to have to do to figure out how to actually use all the parts of that solution and if everything was built right. There also though was a set of custom databases that were in Oracle and at the time most of my database skills were more in like MySQL and Microsoft SQL Server. I hadn't done much Oracle but this was a government agency and a whole bunch of their data came from Oracle and it was integrated with these other databases. So let me just bring it back around. I've got this client. They're not happy with us. They need this thing to get finished. It seems like it's very complicated and it's going to take me a while to figure it out. So I kind of had to figure out what am I going to do at this point? And so I spoke with the project manager from the client and she basically gave me a list of here's four things that aren't working in the solution. And once I talked to her more, I figured out, you know what? These four things are actually actually super small, like these, these are not going to be that hard to fix. And so as the project was moving forward, she starts asking me, hey, would you like to start reading the documentation for how this part of the custom solution works? And there's also this other big part that you wrote this documentation for us and this other big part. Because basically the consultant who had been in there had written a lot of documentation on how the solution worked. And she figured if I knew everything about it, I'd be able to solve these problems. And I realized very quickly that the, the number of changes that she wanted me to make to fix their project that was in trouble were very very targeted and I didn't need to learn everything about this system. So I actually told her, no, I don't want to read the documentation for that. You can give it to me, but I'll just refer to it if I need to. And up to this point in my career, I had a really hard time just saying, I know enough. I know enough to fix this problem. Instead, I always wanted to see, oh, well, I understand this little component of how our business or, you know, the software works. I also want to understand this piece and I also want to understand this piece. And one of the things I would really love to do is as I'd work on a software project, have my understanding of the project get bigger and bigger and bigger with the hope that that's going to give me a better ability to actually do a good job on the project. But in this case, because I had a client that was upset, their project was already late and the changes they wanted made were really small, it actually would have been unproductive for me to try to understand everything about that existing solution that was in place when I didn't really need to understand it just to get those four things done. So I basically had to relate with the client in a way to let them 
them know. If you give me any additional documentation on the solution, I'm probably not going to read it. And I also had to be very clear about, I'm just going to solve these four problems. And so over the course of the next two weeks, uh, I ended up fixing the four issues that they had and they were thrilled about it. And, and the funny thing is up to this point in my career, I had been doing really complicated architectures with multiple systems involved and, you know, web portals that integrated with backend manufacturing systems and just all this super heady intellectual advanced, you know, software stuff. And here I was at the software consulting company being paid pretty well and sent into a client to basically, you know, fix a few database queries and tweak a couple of settings in an application. It did take me a couple weeks because there was a lot of talking to the client to get it all working. But at the end of the day, the work I was doing, I sort of felt almost like this is trivial. Like this, you know, I usually do work that's above this. So the interesting thing I think I learned out of all this that I hope will maybe help you on the next project you're on is I think as software developers, we tend to look at the people in a company and the organization as a whole almost like software itself. We look at each person almost as a component or a class and they all have relationships to each other and certain data, you know, and certain decisions passes back and forth. And I think if you're an architect or you just, you know, have kind of this engineering mind and you're at a company, it's tempting to want to understand every single little relationship and every piece of the code and every part of a solution because that sort of engineering, you know, architect mind of ours takes over and we feel like we want to understand the big picture. But I think that there are times on projects where it makes a lot more sense to actually shield yourself from looking at the entire picture so that you don't overwhelm yourself and you can just accomplish a task and have just enough information to just get in there, get it done, and then really make pleased with you whoever asked you to do that work because you're able to just get them the result they need and then move on to something else. So that's it. I just wanted to share that story with you today. If you're new to my YouTube channel, you know, you can always consider subscribing and you can also listen to these as a podcast on Google Play, Stitcher, iTunes, or SoundCloud. So until next time, thanks.